false. So you can say that I'm doing also a work of electrical engineering since many years or so. Uh, we are, as my colleague said, uh, in the control room, which is the place where we control all the detector, which is underground. And I will be together with Noemi, who is another hardware physicist working with us, uh, be guiding you close to the detector while you will be asking uh, very many questions to the people that will accompany you at the control room. It is a very complex environment, our environment, and the detector is a multi-interest uh, uh, environment. So it uh, contains everything from the abstractness of uh, research physics to everyday engineering and uh, administrative problems. We will try to show a little bit of that uh, to you. Okay, and uh, my name is Ashok Kumar, and uh, I'm also an uh, experimental high energy physicist, uh, working both for detectors and analysis, analysis of the uh, data we get in from the CMS uh, experiment. Uh, so today, uh, you know, we will be happy to take questions whenever uh, possible, but the whole package is to show you the real experiment, and we are lucky that experiment is open, and you can see uh, the detectors, the gas is detector, the silicon detectors, the chlorimeter, which is, you know, really visible to us. And, you know, after uh, a month or so, the parts will be closed, the gap will be closed, and the experiment will again be, you know, working for the, uh, we will be commissioning for the proton-proton collisions in February or so. So, this journey is very, very um, important. So, I would say that, okay, we can start this journey, and on the surface, I can take your questions, queries, whatever you, you wish to ask, and then we will be introducing you different aspects of this experiment, as well as, you know, what we target uh, in future for the CMS uh, to come. Okay, so now... And that, uh, as you have seen, actually, between me and my younger colleague, there is about uh, 2,000 miles where we were born, but uh, nothing separates us here, which is another of the aspects of the nice aspects of where we work. That's a, that's, a, that's a good thing, actually. <laughs> we are very, very far away, away and our uh, culture, our, um, you know, the, the, the system we have come is totally different. And it is very uh, important that at CERN, it is a very unique place. There are pe people from different race, different regions, different, you know, uh, cultures they carry, they come together and work for the common goal, the science, the, the knowledge. And we share uh, all these things um, uh, you know, uh, in different platforms, right from, you know, this outreach activity to analysis we do or a detectors we install. So we, we try to go, you know, in a, in a one way. That is the, through the mind for a thinking and doing the good science for the world to come. And that is very, very important. And this is very, very, um, uh, you know, important as well that the CMS experiment to get together for understanding the fundamentals of the universe. And whatever fundamentals we target, right from, you know, uh, the Higgs discovery, which was which has happened in 2012, to the, you know, possibly the dark matter in coming decade or so. So the point is, we are just thinking to discover fundamental signs for the nice things to cover up, not, you know, something which we are targeting to destroy something or go to create a bad image of science. It is a good image which always has come up from these experiments, and that is very, very important. Okay, so, okay, so we can start our journey. I think, I think we start our journey, you take... Uh, yeah, I take the lead on the and surface. Yes, and then he and I start going down. Okay, so in the meanwhile, uh, while they are taking, uh, you know, there are different routes they have to follow. So they will go from the surface to the cavern, and they will show you how much distance they will cover, roughly 100 meters when they go down. On the surface, we have different controls. The place we are sitting right now, we try to control the experiment. Experiment have different parts. Experiment at the center, we have the tracking of the particles. There is inner tracking and there is outer tracking on the, on the 50 meter, you know, 13 meter or 40 meter away from the interaction point. So the point is, and in between we have a chlorimeter layers. We use different technologies, right from same ignitor technology to the, to the, uh, gas CH detectors. So we have, uh, uh, we have, for example, we use silicon detectors 
at the at the center the core of the uh, core of the collision near to the core of the collisions and these detectors are made by uh, uh, you know very very using very very uh, latest technologies for example you know we use uh, uh, 100 200 microns thin layers of the uh, silicon sensors and these sensors have interleaved uh, layers of strips so very very fine you know micron level um, layers so these layers are important to you know whenever par particle hits they will give us an uh, information of the particle gone through that point and that points give you know different points on these silicon sensors layer of the silicon sensors give us the trajectory trajectory path of the particle and under the magnetic field we can you know find out the momentum of of the particle which has gone through especially the charged particle uh, you can see uh, they are already going through the through the way and they are going to access the experiment through the eye scan right now they are uh, uh, you know using their uh, id card which is impeached on the dosimeter a uh, dosimeter means the the measurement device whenever we go into the into the environment where we face the radiation which kind of radiation we face x rays gamma rays uh, you know all these particle uh, you know beta rays gamma rays you know, all these uh, radiations stay long after the proton proton collisions this year we have stopped the proton proton collisions uh, uh uh two months back uh and then there were heavy ions collisions as well so the point is you know uh, after these collisions radiation still stays and you can see whenever they will return back they can show through the dosimeter that how much radiation is still uh you know present there so for example if noami or maki is there they can show that while working through the experiment how much radiation they had been exposed to uh right now the door is closed they are going in you can see a hurt sign we use the 3.8 tesla magnetic field and uh, in the presence of this strong magnetic field we cannot use the you know the implants which which are being which can be uh, which, which can get disturbed in the presence of uh, the magnetic field so people having the implants uh, are not authorized uh, during the magnetic field operations so now you are seeing a, a screen where we have a cms experiment okay now you know we are accessing the elevator uh, Maki wants to say something. She can take a lead. Are practically ready to 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 descend. So you will lose us pretty soon because we will enter the elevator that will take us to approximately a hundred meters, now eighty something meters below ground, in order to see the open detector. By open. We mean that uh, you can think of the CMS detector like a cylinder cut in several slices. And every time we can move two up to three slices. So open them, push them around and get inside so we can optimize things, we can correct things, we can fix things. And this is uh, the period of intense work uh, in the underground area after that. Everything is put together through well-defined mechanisms, and then we can restart taking data, which for us would mean a closed detector, a magnet on. We, we, you will be a little bit confused now because we will be discussing the magnets of the accelerator, the almost 3,000 very complex sometimes magnets that make it possible for the protons to circulate in two directions in the accelerator and the magnets that each of the four detectors of the four LHC detectors have, so CMS as well, which make it possible for our physics to for our physics to 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 exist. So the magnet I will be referring and you will be seeing is the magnet of CMS. For being able to descend and go close to the detector, you of course have to have no beam you have to have and you have to have no magnetic field both of those are very powerful therefore dangerous so now with noemi we are getting in the elevator it will be very fast and we are going to see you back together with our detector okay so you see it's going fast now
proton proton or heavy ions collide and then we have a thin layer of uh, very thin layers of silicon sensors which gives us the tracking of the particle and then we have big chlorimeter by the way you will see this big chlorimeter uh, as well this parts this part is not open but you will see this part as well so this uh, you know equal end cap and hadron end cap is uh, already visible there and you will see another gap this is in the end cap region you will see uh, the opening of this uh, uh, of this um, gap as well so the point is we have silicon sensors here which gives us the tracking information of the charged particles we have a chlorimeter which measures the energy of the particles and then we have auto tracking where we measure the residual of the interaction which is the muons uh, muon muons and we measure the moment of the muons under very high magnetic field so all these subsystems are monitored through these uh, surface screens. We try to control the, the voltage or we try to see the temperature. We try to see the magnetic field in the system. So all this monitoring as well as control is done through these screens. And then during the running, we have a shift leader. We have a, a data acquisition uh, shifter. They try to see the health of the system and also they try to, you know, uh, uh coordinate with the last return collider accelerator you know time to time to stay on and off during the the running of the experiment so this is the question which i answered for sokia if you will have more questions we will take uh, those questions as well okay now we are in the service cabin you can go so we we are in the service cabin you can see there are different racks here and in these racks we have uh you know high voltage systems we have a low voltage systems. We have a light output, uh, uh, you know, fiber crates, which, which, which are being controlled here. And we, all these subsystems have many channels, millions of channels. So you can see lots of wiring and lot of modules, uh, you know, controlling these fibers, as, uh, fiber output, as well as the, the, the powering of the detector. Okay. okay so uh you can see this uh these racks and you can see all the modules which are sitting inside the racks uh these racks are very specially designed the information about the temperature rise is a uh, constantly you know uh being transmitted to the responsible people uh yeah, the electrical short circuits also uh, if there is electrical short circuit, short circuit or something that is also being transmitted through safety system of the of the device. So these racks are very very unique in you know uh, giving the health information of the rack as well as the security or safety information we need to store uh, during running of the experiment. Okay. So now you see the the you know typical uh, fibers we we use them in the telecom industry and all these fibers are getting a signal from the uh, detector readout. Why we use fibers? Because light is transmitting uh, itself at the close to very close to the speed of light. So you can store the information very quickly. And as soon as this information is taken at at point five, the CMS experiment here in, at CERN, Geneva, this information is also transmitted to different centers around the world, to the Asia, to the America, to the Africa. You know, there are different parts of the world where we are transmitting this uh, data for the people to analyze remotely. So you can see, you know, all there are plenty of racks and, you know, uh, we will go 100 meters down the tunnel, but, uh, you know, at 50 meters or 70 meters, we have so much, um, uh, so many racks to control and also uh, power the the different parts of the detector. So you know millions of channels for for readout and and uh, uh, and uh, other things. So uh, Maki, you can speak for the moment. Yes, we can. we are in the control room. Indeed, as you said, our cabinets for storing electronics uh, we call racks. And here, what do you do? when uh, we you have fibers where when the detector talks to us so when we take the data when we take the pictures you can think of the detector as a huge camera with several layers which is taking pictures in the form of tracks so how the charged particles that are produced after an interaction spread in space all of the energy they deposit 
these are the pictures for the physicists. For the analysis, this is the photograph. So a detector is a huge photographic device and the outcome comes through the fibers while you are driving the photographic device, which has thousands, has millions of channels, millions and millions of little pieces that you have to put together using particular computer programs. As we said, CERN is an environment where you will find every type of specialty. It's not a physicist environment only. We have all types of engineering, all types of uh, computing, all types of administration. It's a really, it's a unique collaboration. So you drive the detectors through power using electrical power, feeding them power. You control them to see that they are doing what they are supposed to do. And you take back what they see in the form of pictures that they are then uh, either fast analyzed and discarded because they do not have something very interesting or put together and given to the physics community for analysis. So it's a, it's a kind of a unique collaboration and a very active one. Again, what you see here, what Noemi is showing you, when you see fancy colors, light blue, light green, like whatever, these are the fibers. The heavy guys are here, which is what is feeding our detectors. And if you see here, keep in mind that many of the electronics that you see, a simple, what we called ourselves a card, an electronics card, is a PhD, and it has costed a lot of thinking and a lot of work. Actually, you have to remember that if some parts are produced, and many are by industry, CERN certainly buys things directly. Usually, we buy things directly, but we use them in a bit different way. That's why many times we are an interesting customer for all types of industry, because they see the capacity of their products pushed to the limits. So we take two questions here. Uh, there is one very interesting question. We do not control the Large Hadron Collider here. Large Hadron Collider accelerator is controlled by CCC, CERN Collider you know, uh, LSC co uh, control room at Pervisan site, which is a 10 kilometer away from here. The second question is about pre-shower. Pre-shower is made up of silicon sensors. Its data is transmitted to the different uh, computer farm. So uh, near to the Maki where Maki is sitting, the other side, we have the computer farm as well. But not only pre-shower, we collect the data from all the subsystems, pre-shower, ECAL, HCAL, uh, uh, tracker. So all this data is collected there and being transmitted to the to the first floor of the, of the place where we are sitting uh, right now. And then it will go to T0 at Sun and then to tier one, uh, which is spread uh, all around the globe. So, so this, uh, the, you know, near to where Maki is uh, going, there are, you know, near to this, we have the computer farm, which is storing the information from the pre-shower as well. And uh, for the other question, LSC is not uh, uh, controlled here. LSC is controlled from another place, which is a 10 kilometer away from here. Now, we are very, very close to entering into the cavern, and we will go through the similar procedure mm -hmm. as we have seen. So, okay. Maki again. Yes. Uh, yeah. We are very close to uh, to the detector, and and the detector is actually actually what you have just seen is the control system of the detector. I'm supposed to enter using my dosimeter, which is a very personal object for all the physicists working here, and then I am going to be identified by the iris uh, scanner uh, and uh, we are going to access the detector which has been of course uh, open since some time and has been given clearance by the particular services uh, what do you have to remember is that uh, it is a very specialized job and we can we are big scientific collaborations but there is a central core usually of people working mostly with the detector. 
and there is another group of people taking care of the data and another group of people consuming the data. The data is open to everybody. We are an open lab, so everybody can see to what is being produced by what you will be seeing now, which is a part of the CMS detector open. As we said, the CMS detector is a little bit like a, a cylindrical cake that you can cut in slices and you can push them apart. And now we are going to move a little bit so we get away from our visitors. Uh, we get away from our visitors because you see that it is worth coming to visit since it is very impressive when open. So now you see the frontal part has been moved and here you see what would be the central part inside the gold, the silver surface. We go in and Noemi is showing you the beam pipe, which is being supported by the green ribbon since it has been left more or less in in the space and very very inside you see a silver wall behind there is the tracking detector the nose that you see here is the calorimeters where we measure the energy so remember inside there hides the part of the device that is taking pictures of the tracks of the particles so you have a collision you have tracks being produced. These are being photographed inside there. All around the area, especially this nose that you see here, and what is in silver is the calorimeter, is the part of the device that measures the energy of the particles. The silver ring that you see is actually the dewar containing the liquid uh, helium for, for the magnet. So in this area, you have the huge magnet from whom the from whom CMS takes part of its name. It's a compact muon solenoid. Solenoids produce a certain type, a certain form of magnetic field. So the lines of the magnet go in parallel to the cylinder, and it's a very strong magnet, a hundred thousand times the Earth's magnetic field. Why do we use a magnet? We use a magnet because we have many charged particles produced in every track, and the magnet makes them bend inside it, so they are kept hostage until they deposit all their energy and all the information they carry with them. So it's very important for bending the, the, the charged particles and for keeping them hostage until they release all their information to us. That's why you need a magnet. And all around the area, now my colleague is the big expert there, are the muon chambers where we, we uh, trace the more tricky particle, which is the muon that will not deposit all its energy in the calorimeter, is produced in the center of uh, uh, interaction at the center of the calorimeter, and spreads in space passing through the muon chambers. And this is exactly made in color with the silver and red parts that you see. So this is where the muons are being photographed. When you manage to photograph the energy, the tracks and the muon tracks, you have the complete picture you need lots of bright young computer scientists to put the picture together and lots of bright physicists to analyze the, the data. Okay, so there is a question on the YouTube that we whether we are nice, you know, uh, regular um, uh, schools or not. This is true. If you go to, uh, you know, just search for a CMS DAS school, you know, CMS data analysis school or on the CERN, we are, there are free lectures about detector physics. So you can go through uh, the lectures. These are free lectures. Normally, we organize these lectures for the summer interns, which, you know, or most of them join during the summer. So yes, there are lectures and there are schools for the for the people. And depending upon the interest and depending upon the, the curiosity, 
you can you know uh, try to attend these lectures online offline and these are you know the the videos of these lectures are also stored so you can go through all these things uh, these things uh, on those lectures as well now uh, you, you know as uh, maki was showing you know very interesting part you have seen the beam line you have seen the uh, you have seen the magnet now if you see the right side there are you know different layers of these detectors on top of the nose why even no i mean i'm saying why even so you see these detectors are having gas volume and whenever a muon particle passes through in the gas the ionizes the medium and in the medium you have the you know after the ionization you have the charge that charge is collected through the electronics and ele that uh, electronic charge is converted to a digital signal and transmitted to the computer farm for storage that particular information is the important in this curve if you see this curve in this curve you have different hits here different segments here all these segments are coming from the charge being produced through the ionization and you know whenever you get this information from different uh, uh, hits here so these hits combine in the presence of the magnetic field give you the track and this tracking will give you the momentum measurement as you know that from the secretary uh, equation as well that you can get the momentum of the particle using the strong magnetic field so this is very very important the red part is iron here and this iron gives us you know extra handle we call it as yokes actually extra handle to for the magnetic field to get here to tesla uh, close to two tesla everywhere and inside the uh, inside the chlorimeter we have mostly Four Tesla magnetic field, uh, 3.8 Tesla, um, and then uh, we have the uh, you know you saw the saw the uh, chlorimeter, the barrel part as well, and yeah, uh, Noami, if you can show the uh, vacuum tank again. So in the vacuum tank, where this this will fit in, you know exactly this uh, this nose will fit in into the back tank, so the barrel part and can you know then it will be again much more compact as you see on the screen it is really compact this will this part goes to here and then it is completely a compact uh, detector if you see other detectors they are having some special uh, you know uh, there are many spaces around it but here you cannot see this is very very compact and because of the 3.8 tesla magnetic field we can you know get most of the information about the tracks as well as the the particles which are depositing energy in the very very uh, nice uh, inorganic scintillator inside and organic scintillator outside maki you can take the lead now i can see the question okay now you see the part of the detector that is closed uh, so if you if you see the detector in there there is still the beam pipe inside the big orange volume which is made for actually protecting, because if you think about it, what are we doing here? We are having millions and millions of particles interact that they drive around the accelerator in bunches. Every bunch has several millions of protons. We put them together using very elaborate magnet control systems. So the magnets all along the accelerator force them to have particular tracks, they are meeting in the center of our detector, which is somewhere there, just uh, you've seen it half open. And in the forward areas, when you have a collision in the motorway, the most deadly collision is the one that is head on. So as you are putting all these particles in the same space together, you have some that interact. And if you are lucky, you have some that interact head on when you have the maximum transfer of momentum when you are giving more potential to what is inside those particles to appear. So it's true that there you have also the most radiation damage, the more you need the most protection for your equipment, and you have all the uh, machinery that would allow you to also support the beam pipe that is coming inside from there, to support it also in case of uh, micro movements that happen in the underground, since we are very close to mountains here and there are small, tiny 
movements in the in the area so we 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 want to avoid that we want to be as stable as possible and we also want to be able to absorb and be a hundred percent sure that our equipment and ourselves are very protected uh, from radiation again as you were told uh, we would not be here if there would be any danger of radiation actually i will control if we remember my dosimeter when we go out so that you can see this is my dosimeter it's being controlled regularly from the radiation service of cern and hey, if it has been found that it hey, i have gotten some uh, form of radiation uh, it is something that is always uh, scrutinized etc but you will see it will write zero and it's uh, it is a very strong policy at CERN since we are an open organization and an organization that mostly loves to have young people who are naturally curious and they will go all over the place. So we are very protective of that. Okay. So uh, the question is, um, uh, why do we have a muon chamber outside the, the magnet? Actually, muon momenta is measured through two uh, tracking stations. There is a tracking station inside the volume, inside the calorimeter. So we also use the silicon tracker and we also use the muon, muon station. So to measure the momenta uh, using the inner, inner heat information, which is in the silicon and outer, because muon, if you see, muon can pass through, uh, through his life up to the last station. So you can accurately measure the momenta of the information using this information as well as this information for so for the muons we are also using the inner detector system as well as outer detector system the second question was about big bang yes we are going in time very close to the big bang time very close but we are not exactly to that point but what we are doing is we are trying to collide quarks 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 gluons or gluons gluons and creating the matter out of it now to have the big bang gluons and quarks also has to be produced from some energy to reach that we need to go for very very high energies and a very very high dense environment and that dense environment we can create in alix experiment alice experiment which is also on lsc at point three so in that experiment we are colliding not proton protons but let let to create a very dense quark gluon plasma and create the situation much closer to the cms so that is the answer for Big Bang. But this is still very many magnet orders of magnitude away from, uh, yeah, from very, creating. Very, yeah, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is no chance to to make something like that here. He's uh, absolutely right. So, okay. Now, Maki, over to you again. Yes. So here we are on the other end of our detector. You can see that we have managed to, we have a real estate problem. We have managed to fill all this room that had you seen it at the beginning, it looked like a huge empty space with uh, layers of our detectors that are getting more and more elaborate and with all the supporting systems that you need because these det the detectors, these cameras are kind of alive. They have gas systems that go through them. They have a dry atmosphere that is implemented uh, so we avoid to have uh, humidity and condensation problems. They are temperature controlled uh, because they, um, they uh, have to survive in radiation and they have especially the more central you get, the closer to the beam, you have huge currents in closed volumes, which means uh, jowl heat generation, which means cooling systems, all in very confined spaces. So these can become very elaborate systems. You have to, as I said, you have to avoid condensation in these systems because they are cold. So you have a very interesting control problems you have to have to be sensing to be looking at your detector at all the time not only for safety reasons but because it's a huge scientific investment that even if you had money to rebuild it you wouldn't have the people and the time many of these pieces as we said when we were looking at the electronics cavern are unique you cannot remake them very easily. So it's a very uh, alive volume, the volume you are seeing. 
Now we are on the other side, on the opposite side from where we were, and you can get uh, another look of the same object. Again, you see the inner part of the detector where you have in the very, very center, the tracker, which is very protected and circled with the heavy calorimeter. So keep thinking, tracker, very light, till the tracks. Calorimeters, very heavy, they eat the material, they eat all the particles produced and they give up a, me a measurement of the energy and muon chambers that measure and look at the muons that are numerous, that are sort of like heavy electrons that are produced in very, they give the signature to very important physics phenomena. So they absolutely have to be part of the picture Actually, all the large detectors, all these detectors we are discussing, have been heavy on investing on the muons. And as you heard, the, the, we follow the tracks of the muons, starting with candidates that are in the very center of the detector and being really verified and completely uh, traced in the muon area. So every time, a physics detector of, of this generation is detector of traces, calorimeter for energy, and muon chambers. And in between them, you have a magnet that will keep the charged particles inside the calorimeter area until they die, giving all their energy in a measurable form except for the for what we cannot kill which is the muon we go down now okay so in the meanwhile uh we can tell that you know higgs was produced in the center of the uh collision so center of the experiment you have seen the beam line and then the decay products of the higgs electrons and muons were captured by electrons were captured by a chlorimeter uh energy was measured by the electro uh, chlorimeter uh, photons as well, Higgs to gamma gamma as well. So photons were also measured um, in the chlorimeter. And then uh, the, the muons were captured by inner tracking and as well as the outer tracking system. And we measure the momenta accurately. As, as soon as we measure the momentum information, you know, all these Lorentz variables gives us, if we combine all this information, this gives us the mass of the particle. So in 2012, we discovered the Higgs and we said that the mass of the Higgs uh, as discovered by this experiment, as well as other experiment on another C atlas, is close to 124 GeV. And we we use the energy units here because we are talking in terms of energy matter relation, and this is very very important that energy, momenta, mass is measured in same energy units. Now you can see the very very you know in the red region you can see there is no detector, and in January we are going to install the detectors there. So whatever the, the free space available there, we are going to populate it with uh, gaseous detectors. RPCs and jam detectors will be installed in these red stations. They are being ready. If you see one of the chamber is already installed, the white chamber, this is IRPC. This is a very, very latest technology. And we are using this latest technology to enhance the capabilities and performance of the CMS experiment. Over to you, Maki. Yes, exactly. What you have to you have to remember is that the reason CERN exists or is because of pure research and because of the fundamental question that every human being, independent of uh, educational level, chances in life or whatever, has. How was all this created? How how is our world? moving how is it made what is it made out of this is the fundamental question that will always give rise to institutions like cern or equivalent however another reason that cern is being very useful is because it's exploiting technology is pushing technology to the limits in order to have the tools to provide some answers to those fundamental questions. Now discussing, this is the fun show here. You see that the, even if our magnet is switched off, it affects 
are permanent sort of. So you see that the permanently magnetized detector supports are uh, making our little paper, whatever, uh, stick there without, uh, without the magnet, of course, being on, because if the magnet happened to be on, we wouldn't be here. Okay, just to show you some of the effects. So, and also maybe to make you think what are the constraints and how much material science enters in all this in order to have cables, connectors, uh, parts of detector that can survive this environment since we are in an environment where there is radiation and magnetic field. So everything has to be made to survive or uh, in this environment. You, we cannot just use any material. We cannot use 99.99% uh, of modern electronics because after one minute in this environment, it will become soup and will stop responding. So it's lots of technology that enters the game and lots of interesting questions, not only to high energy physicists, but to material scientists and all types of engineering. So there are three questions now. Uh, first question is, uh, there is a flag of Pakistan because Pakistan has uh, given us this uh, iron plates and iron uh, feet. So most of the iron uh, material in red is, has come from there. So there is a flag of that country. So all these different subsystems are made by different countries and they owe these detectors for long. The, yes, the second it's not only, I yeah. mean, if you saw, we passed from some electronics cards that had the UCLA <laughs> acronym on them. And yes. you are going to see somewhere there is a Greek company signing. I don't know where it is, but you will see. I mean, at CERN, it's very hard not to get a particular country and a particular nationality. Getting it is no news. Not getting it is news. Okay? <laughs> okay. So the second question is about how many months we run. Roughly seven to eight uh, months we run the CMS experiment. And usually three to four months as now be stopped for a maintenance. So right now detector is open for maintenance and putting new services as well as new detectors inside the CMS. The third question about the accelerator, so you can see the screen. So you see this big LSC, the small uh, SPS system, and then we have SPS accelerator, and then we have a pro pro proton synchrotron. So we do something like this. We take a bottle of hydrogen, strip off the electrons, and we pass the protons through different uh, stages, uh, different magnetic, electric and magnetic field, and we try to increase the energy and also, you know, go through different steps and reach the SPS and then to the LS LSC. So the point is, we start from, you know, few keV particles, reach up to MeV and then to GV and TV range. So TV range is covered by this big accelerator. Why you need a big accelerator? Because time to time you have to go through magnetic field and electric field. Electric field gives you the potential, the energy to the particle, and you know bending will make it you know, into the orbit. And then you collide wherever you wish. So you have a four collision points, CMS, LACB, Atlas, and Alice. You collide and get the new particles uh, being created there. So this is the answer for the third question. Uh, Maki, over to you. Okay, so we are at the ground floor. We are practically, actually there is a floor underneath here, which is pretty disgusting because it's where you have all the gas systems. I mean, it's, a, it's an area that is uh, really, really going uh, quite deep. It's a lot of engineering and you see like mo in most cases, the floors are movable, but for you, for me, the detector is, the, this is the bottom part of the detector. And you can see that, we still have some type of uh, uh, cables and elect but really no electronics. Most of the systems that you see here now are being removed or are completely passive systems that they can take the magnetic field and, uh, and the radiation when it comes. Okay, so that's the bottom part of the detector. You have seen the top. You have seen the most important part, which is the middle. And now you get another, what I would call spectacular view. And you will see, if you visit, you can see actually the top part, which is at the ground 
uh, at the real ground where the detector was first put together. So CMS was put together at ground level and then it was split in parts and it was lowered from here by a special super duper crane and then put together again. And you can see that when we open the detector is uh, then you have support uh, structures in order to keep it uh, stable. And then when the time comes and you are ready, you use pneumatics in order to move um, uh, all the structures and put uh, and close it together using uh, uh, distance sensors and trying. I want you to think that all these pieces that are more or less a disc can be 2,000 tons. It has to touch the detector. It is 2,000 tons of very, very, very fragile electronics. It's not just 2,000 tons. And uh, when it closes, it has, I mean, we are fighting for microns in the measurements. So you have to understand that it is nothing that you sort of close and you turn a little bit to the left and you push a little bit to the right. It has to be perfect. And actually what is striking is after you have closed and everything is okay, you switch on the magnetic field. And then in the sensors, in the distance measurements, you see the squeeze of the detector when it is closing. So it is, I mean, it is an alive structure in a sense. It, and it is the type of thing that does not sort of work. It either works 100% according to the specs and more, or you have thrown away a whole lot of money and a whole lot of effort, and it does work. And that is a device that you build and you use for decades and decades, adapting it every time to new technologies in order to shoot any further, to, to go further in your goal, which is always physics. It's a unique tool, and it's a unique tool practically belonging to everybody who is interested because it is very open. And uh, if you cannot come here, you can always see it. You can always discuss. You can always ask uh, questions. It's a particular place for young people to learn a lot and to to participate together. Uh, Maki, but of the friends uh, want to see the magnet again. So if you can show the magnet again. Okay. Yes, yes. Noemi is the, is the camera woman, so she shows the magnet. You see, it's the silver viewer. Okay, it's this silver part, silver thick ring, where you have the liquid, uh, where you have the helium. Yeah. So you have seen the magnet. The other question was about the um, energy. No, we are not increasing the energy right now. We will be continuing with 13 TeV. And uh, so we will be running with uh, 13 TeV for the moment. And there was another question, synchrotron radiation. Yes, this, these are the topics which, you know, accelerator physicist has to solve. That's why one of the reasons we are not in, uh, you know, electron and electron kind of a collisions, electron or positron collisions, because we try to avoid the uh, synchrotron radiation. And... So that's why the linear collider, which are going, which is going to have a electron and positron collisions, supposed to. So they are they are always linear. So as soon as we try to bend, we face the synchrotron radiation. So since proton is a charged particle, the synchrotron radiation is universally proportional to uh, the the uh, uh, mass of the particle. And since the and also several um, um, you know uh, uh, parameters above the mass, which is m power two or something. So the point is, as soon as mass of the proton is bigger than the uh, the, the electron, the synchrotron radiation will be less in case of protons. So that's why proton protons can always be preferred in the circular rings. And for the high energies and for high other uh, collisions, we can choose electron and positron collisions and choose the linear accelerator only. So uh, they are, I think they are coming uh, out of the experiment. Oh, you can still see the experiment and you can see the magnet very well inside if you see the uh, end of the beam uh, beam line you can see the the pixel detectors and uh, strip detectors being covered by the aluminum foil so we try to keep it closed silicon sensor which we are operating are are uh, having a pn junction and to 
to and we are reverse bias them and when we have these doped sensors we try to cool them to have a minimal noise and maximum single to noise ratio now you can again see the foot of the detector over to you maki yes so you saw you saw the you saw actually the cover of the pixel detector and now which is the inner part and now you are seeing again the support uh, of, of the detector and all the electronics so you have to uh, remember that yes the pixel detector and the silicon detector is uh, a fragile in a sense detector because it's just uh, silicon wafers and pixels which are put together in a way that you maximize the efficient you maximize the resolution and to do so you have to throw away any type of volume so you have thousands of tons of the calorimeter because the calorimeter is what is going to eat the particles and measure their energy in the form of a signal, an electrical signal at the end, photons that become an electrical signal, while the tracker's role is to define the tracks of the charged particles without interacting with them. So without taking any energy away of the particles. So there are two complementary detectors. And again, the third complement is the muon detectors that complete the icon. If some of you will become engineers, this is the super playground of engineering. There is no engineering problem that we do not have. Uh, there is a lot of mechanical engineering, a lot of civil engineering, electrical, electronics engineering, and of course, uh, the physicists who are detector physicists, and then there are, of course, the analysis physicists. The whole picture, the whole this detector concept first is put together by targeting always the final physics and how much physics we can get out. So it all starts from the physics and then the other fields enter in in order to maximize the physics potential of the particular detector in uh, the accelerator complex. Okay, and now you see the end of the detector with the disks that are supporting it and with all the systems that will be used for forward calorimeters and for the muon chambers forward calorimeters are calorimeters that go very much in the very frontal area that i told you that have uh, a lot of radiation damage so they have to be particularly sturdy for such uh, such type of uh, of life Okay, now I take, uh, since we are you know, slowly coming out of the cavern, I take a couple of questions. Uh, what is this hole? This is not, there is no hole. If you see the screen, uh, you know, we have taken out the end cap for a maintenance. So there were some maintenance needed on this part and this part. So the point is we have just detached this uh, for a while. So the gap you were seeing was the gap from this side and then this was a complete, uh, this uh, uh, 290 ton uh, detector was attached to this uh, yoke one. So the point is, this was just taken out, and when, when it will close, uh, it will be, you know, there will be no hole. Electrons are produced everywhere; they are isotropic. So as soon as the particles, any new particles are produced, the electrons are isot uh, isotropically produced, unless or until uh, we have a, you know, uh, uh, charge and parity violation in the in the process. Now, what are the specific? So we we operate that uh, detector for collisions between roughly April to uh, September or so. This year we ran from. Uh, May, uh, first week of May up to October 30. So this is typical uh, time. In winter, we have to stop for maintenance. Uh, why the parts of the detector are colored? Actually, they are not colored, but, uh, you know, no, except iron. Iron is covered because iron, you know, red is iron. And then you know that, okay, we have kept the iron, red color for iron. But other parts, there is no reason for, uh, you know, specific coloring. We, uh, as soon as we get the elements, we, we try to put them in. So, for example, the the detectors are being you know made and put in uh, aluminium cases or aluminium honeycomb structure so most of the detectors have the aluminium uh, like color 
uh, does the LSE results bring any changes in the properties of particle? They should not be actually. If electron is uh, uh, having charge minus one, it should have charge minus one and we have measured the charge to mass ratio. So the point is we are not trying to measure the properties of the particle except very heavy particles. For example, Higgs boson. Higgs boson is a scalar. So for the first, uh, you know, you can say for the first time you have a zero uh, positive particle, zero is the, in, in, you know, is the spin and positive is the parity. Uh, and mass we have measured here. So we are, you know, in a way we are uh, very, very close to theory and there are not uh, many violations uh, being, uh, you know, uh, being seen in the, in the in analysis. Uh, but in the equipment dose just after the, after the operation, roughly, you know, it depends where you, you, you work. If you work close to the beam pipe, the radiation level is very high. If we are very, very far on the ground or on the balcony, the radiation level is very, very low. So in, in last two months, if I have worked for a week, the radiation level which I have got is 0 0.0, uh, you know, 0 0.03 millicurie or so. And we know that for the worker, it is up to few millicurie we can get exposed. Uh, what what does this relates to new hypothesis in quantum particle theory? Well, Higgs is a major achievement and we do not know how the mass of the Higgs is fixed up to 124 by theoretical constraints. So theory has given other options like supersymmetry and other things. So we have to see why the Higgs mass is 124 uh, and there are not there are no concentration. Higgs mass could have been from 100 GV to 1 TV. So we have to find out this answer. Uh, what qualification we need for going to CERN? You see the jobs at CERN. You see the summer internships. Apply there and you are welcome. Is CERN connected to NASA in any way? Actually, NASA launched one of our experiments. Uh, uh, this was uh, designed and made at CERN. And NASA helped us to put in space. So we are trying to measure the positron spectrum in space. And uh, so NASA helped us to put a detector in space, but uh, NASA is working for their own uh, projects and we are working for uh, fundamental uh, science here at CERN. Who gives the idea of CMS? So I can say that uh, there were uh, three people who, ha who has been awarded with the uh, Milner Prize. So, you know, uh, Michel Delagnagra, our first spokesperson, Jim Birdi, our second spokesperson. And then there are other people who were there uh, during the conception. But the, all this information is also on, on Google. You can find who were the actual people. But I have, uh, I have already named a few uh, in my answer. OK, so you can see we, are, uh, we were uh, roughly 100 meters down, and we are coming on the surface now. And uh, uh, you know my clicks will come on the surface and will meet me. So we are coming through the cavern. And minus two, minus one are the different levels where we have placed the services uh, and the controls and the powering of the of the experiment. Also, you have seen the fiber readout system where we collect the uh, data and try to pass this data to the computer farm and other tier centers around the globe. Do we have more questions? I have to see a bit. So we don't have any question now. Okay, we are coming uh, up. We are waiting for the elevator. Yes, I see. Yeah, minus two is stuck down. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, the yeah. point is, um, uh, we have a minute or two minutes to go. So uh, mm -hmm. you know, okay, I got more questions, which is good. Okay. Does Higgs boson is only one percent responsible for mass in body? See, <laughs> we are made of our protons and neutrons. Proton neutrons have quarks, electrons, and so on. Or electrons, you know, in the atoms. So everything is getting mass from the Higgs. So Higgs field, which is everywhere, is giving mass to electrons and the protons and the neutrons. So this way, we everybody is getting mass through the Higgs mechanism. Are you hoping to find supersymmetry particular CMS? Hope so. Right now, there is a very, very, uh, we haven't found any information about supersymmetry. But let us see what comes next in next few years. Uh, how many types of project uh, are there? There are many projects. But CMS LSC is one of the biggest projects at CERN, actually the biggest project at CERN. Uh, there are many small experiments you can see, uh, just write how many uh, projects are running at CERN. There are many actually. Uh, right now, um, uh, well, we are trying to find out new particles. If you see, there are very, very small messy particles we always get in LSCB and also in, uh, in um, CMS. So there are higher states of uh, quark, anti-quark uh, composites. And also three quark components. So, and also we have seen a three quark plus quark and two quark state. So these states can also exist. So actually, not Higgs boson. We already uh, have discovered many states which are very very important for fundamental science. How can one can join CERN? Just write how can I join CERN and see Google the answer. 
uh, what shows in log of sun? The quarks. You see Q, Q, Q. So quarks. Quarks are the fundamental particles building us. Who shows? Uh, so quarks, I have already ran. What is the pressure there? <laughs> we run the water at 10 bar pressure. We run the gas at uh, you know uh, similar temp uh, pressures. Apart from this, there is no pressure thing in the cavern. No, what we can say that the in the beam pipe, ah, we beam have pipe. a very low pressure. Yes. It's uh, indeed it is smaller than the uh, air pressure yeah. on the moon. Yeah, it's a vacuum actually. <laughs> it's a vacuum. There is if you know, as uh, somebody was asking about um, uh, the synchrotron radiation, we do get beam beam um, you know interactions and problems while running the proton proton uh, beams. So yes, uh, there there are some halos or UFOs being discovered. But the point is, we we have a big vacuum there, and uh, pressure is also very very low. Okay. We also have artists. You have yeah. not to forget that we also have artists at CMS. And here you see a collage of several photographs of our colleagues. I don't know how well it shows, but you can see the initials CMS, which are made out of the women participating in the experiment and the darker background. So you see that, as I told you, we have any type of discipline together with us. It's a very fun place to visit. I encourage you to visit it or to visit it virtually. Okay, Adil, you apply for uh, internship and then you will get the answer. Uh, temperature of super... So normally, helium be cool for super operation around 1.9 Kelvin uh, or close to that. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And not only me and Maki, but we have Jotan and Noami who helped us to, you know, uh, do this operation today. As you see, I am radiation free. And I have been quite visiting the pit and working. So. That's nice. Okay, so she's going to meet us on the surface. Okay, here they are. They will join us on the control room. The meanwhile. Welcome back. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Okay. Yes, we did a good job, I guess, and there are no more questions. Okay. Now. Yeah. It's a free place. As I said, you can email, search, uh, do whatever with your questions. We will always try to, to answer or find somebody that can answer them. Yeah, there is no issue. There is another question. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye.